Hello and welcome to the Old Golden Black for this preview of Sunday's season-defining game. I uh, hope you're all feeling excited for it and not too nervous. I'm not feeling anxious. I think last uh, Friday I was very nervous because I think it was a turning point in the season. Had we have lost to Cardiff, there was a very good chance that they could have caught us. But the position that we're in now... We are so, so close to promotion. We don't even need to kick a ball. It could be all done before we all turn up at the Molyneux on Sunday lunchtime. Now, I've just watched Nuno's interview before the match. And again, he's been stubborn and he's been persistent in his attitude and what he said. It's another game. It's another game that we want to win. It's a big game. And we just move on. Which has been the main reason behind our success this season. I think had we got carried away like the fans were, myself including, back in August, I think after the Hull City game, uh, I remember thinking we could go up here. Even after losing to Cardiff, I was still very, very confident that we were going to have a good season. I didn't envisage it to be this good. I thought we'd challenge for the playoffs. But the way that this season's gone has been incredible, but it's down to Nuno and the attitude that is staff and the players have got because of him and the focus that hasn't shifted at all all season it's still the same now and that's what we've you know as people sort of need to learn lessons from that I think you know set yourself goals and focus on them until they're they're achieved uh, as for the team news I don't think there's any question about the team I think they'll be they'll be quite straightforward it'll be the team that played on Wednesday night, uh, there was a slight question mark of a Sace, but he seems to be fit at the moment anyway, so that'll be, that'll be fine. He's got an amazing engine. I think it's been overlooked a little bit, but if you consider he's played every game over this Easter period, as of a number of others, but nobody, I don't think, have, has put in as much effort as he did against Middlesbrough when he lay flat on the ground. Apparently he had a bit of a knock as well before or during the game against Derby as well. So he's he's been another character who all season has... Uh, been there and has worked their socks off to get Wolves to this position. Now after Ruben Neves' wonder goal on Wednesday night, there was a lot of talk on social media about where does it stand and Soccer AM did a, a little poll putting up against uh, Paul Scholes' wonder volley against Bradford and Zidane's goal in the Champions League final and a couple of other ones as well and it won that poll but I don't know whether... That was just because you know there were loads and loads of Wolves fans on social media watching it over and over again. I've never watched a goal as much as I've seen that goal. I must have seen it over a hundred times now, and I've seen it on every piece of social media now. I think except for Pinterest, and it's a real shame that the goal of the season uh, vote closed on midnight on Wednesday night before that goal was even I had a chance to put on that list. But I think to be honest, it should win goal of the season as default, and then whichever has won from that list should be second place. I think that would be perfectly fair and I don't think anybody would be upset about that, would they? Personally, I went for the uh, Diogo Jota goal against Sheffield United. I loved the team play. I think as this season has been about the team rather than individuals, I thought it was a goal that summed up the uh, philosophy of Nuno, the best from those goals and just the quick passing and stuff in between uh, Cavaliero, Doherty and Jota and Costa was just incredible, so that's why I voted for that. So my player of the season, I went for Ruben Neves as well, possibly because I was on a high after his performance on Wednesday evening, but on the whole, I think he's been the overwhelming top performer of the season uh, for Wolves. There were a couple of close calls as well. Connor Cody was up there, was Umin and Arin, and Doherty as well, because of his absence last uh, Tuesday against Hull, really emphasised his importance in the team for me. I've never seen a player like Neves and I've never just I've never been able to just sit and watch one player during a game either for as long as I watch Neves. He's always in the game. And I think everybody is just desperate for him to, to stay for just a couple more years. I th and I've got i I've, I've got a feeling that he will because why would he have dropped from the Champions League to the championship this season and then not stick with the project and the and everything next season in the Premier League? And then, I mean, if the if a team then comes in with Champions League football or European football at that point, we can't really complain. But I think now he's unproven in the Premier League. You know, he's been linked with Manchester United, but are they likely to spend twenty, thirty, forty million pounds on a player who's in unproven at that level? 
It's difficult to tell. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below who you voted for for player of the season and who did you, what goal did you vote for as the goal of the season. Now, in the build-up to Sunday's fixture, I decided to speak to Davo, who's a very big uh, YouTuber over with Birmingham City, and we spoke briefly about the game on Sunday. Now, apologies for some of the poor audio quality during this uh, interview problems down my end, but some good points made by Davo, and thanks again to him for coming on to the channel. All right, thanks Davo for uh, joining me on the channel today. Uh, nice to have some friendly uh, rivalry, early debate before the game, uh, as hopefully that's how it goes off on Sunday. Um, you've had uh, a bit of indifferent form, you're having a bit of a certain under Monk. last couple of games, shaky again, what are you expecting on Sunday? Yeah, even though the last couple of games haven't gone away results-wise, we've actually done all right. We've created a lot of chances, at 18 shots still on Tuesday. Mm. So for us, it's more a case of can we actually finish our chances. However, against you lot, I mean, there's no reason for us to be confident. It's a case of if we can nick a point, it would be a miracle. Yeah. Um, obviously, your season has just been uh, ridiculous and you'll go down as one of the better teams in the history of the championship. So for us to go there and get anything would be a bonus. Is there any part of you that almost hopes that we get promoted on Saturday night before we play, so there's a little bit of complacency in the air from our point of view? Uh, that would probably help a little bit. Uh, however, I just think you, you're so close to the finish line now that either way, you, yeah, it's, it's going to be a celebration for you. And yeah. um, I can't see us getting anything out of it, to be honest with you. <laughs> so what has Gary Monk done then over the last couple of weeks that's, that's almost turned it around? What he's done is reinstilled belief in the players, brought the passion back, and he's given us a way of playing, which we never had under Cottrell. Mm. Hotter, our record signing, is back in the side, and he's actually uh, causing damage for a change. Mm. And we seem to just be creating a lot more chances. We seem to be confident on the ball, and we've got a lot more about us. Um, it's a big, big change. And I think sometimes when you've got a manager who can... Just command people's respect in the dressing room. Mm. That's a big difference maker. That was the problem was it with Cottrell. They, they seem to lack inspiration from the touchline, from what I saw as an outsider. And that's a clown. Don't get me started on him. <laughs> in over his head, he should never be a championship manager again. OK. <laughs> to be honest, he needs to start at the bottom and work his way up. Yeah. He even wants to get back into League One, I think, because yeah. he has been a disaster of a manager, a disaster of a human being. <laughs> in over his head, too much pressure takes it out on people around him. He's a professional excuse maker. I'm so glad I never have to listen to one of his interviews again. <laughs> Gets me wound up just mentioning his name. Yeah. The man's a joke. So do, do you think that enough has been done? Do, is there enough time left in the season for it to be saved then? It can be, but it's touch and go. Uh, if we play the way we've played the last four or five games, we've got as good a chance as any. But, mm. you know... Tough game coming up. If results don't go our way this weekend, we're really, really in the thick of it again. Yeah. And there's no guarantees at all for us. Yeah, well, that, that was another question of mine. Is Bolton are playing Barnsley, of course, this weekend. And yeah. if either one of those two get a win, then, you you know, you're really back in trouble. And you've still got Fulham to play. You've got Sheffield United to play. So things are looking really tough for you. Is there, is there part of you almost that, that wants to get relegated just to get all this dead wood out of the club and, and rebuild like we did a few years ago? I was starting to think that under Cottrell, but now that we've got Monk, there's actually some hope that if we stayed up, we'd be all right next season. Mm. So I'm not thinking that anymore. I think we do need to stay up. We've also got a bit of uncertainty financially, so if we went yeah. down, it could be a disaster. OK, yeah. Um, now, the rivalry between Wolves and Blues in my lifetime has probably been more fierce than the Wolves and the Albion because of the sort of competitive between the two teams. It's been fairly... Even I'd say between over the last ten years, I think. Uh, what's it like as a Blues fan? How do you view this rivalry? I do enjoy it a lot. The games have uh, really become quite spicy mm. the last few years, and uh, in a way, like you say, it's, there's more events that happen at these games than than with us and Villa, which you wouldn't expect. But mm. I think it's a, it's a tribute really to both sets of fans. It's always a a big atmosphere, and again, especially with you know you possibly getting promoted, it's going to be. Another interesting one this weekend. Yeah. Do you envisage there being angry scenes or you know fighting and stuff at the end? Should we go on the pitch and stuff like that? Once once people go on the pitch, all bets are off. Yeah. Especially when it's between us two. But 
You don't know. I mean, I don't think we've got particular animosity towards you lot. So what do you see then as your own weaknesses uh, at the moment? Like I said, we just haven't finished our chances lately. And it's uh, it's unusual for us to be talking of creating so many chances. But like I said, 18 at Bristol City, seven on goal and only scored one. So mm. we've really got to work on that. We've got no depth up front. We've got one fit striker, Lukas Jukovic. Maybe Sam Gallagher will be back to come on the bench, but I'm not confident of that. So it's really a question of can we do enough to score goals? Yeah. And I'm not convinced. <laughs> right, well, thank you very much, Dave, for coming on. Uh, all the best on Sunday and for the rest of the season. I'd... There's part of me that wants Midlands football to thrive and for that, I think the Championship will be the place to be for Midlands football next year, the way that it's looking. Okay. Um, so thank you very much again and all the best for Sunday. Fair play to you, mate. Nice one. Thank you. So there you go. Thanks, Dave, for that uh, little bit of insight there. So there's been a message sent out by Laurie Dalrymple today about fans coming onto the pitch uh, and saying about how it will affect the uh, playing surface before the game against Sheffield Wednesday in two weeks' time. They don't want to have divots and stuff ruining Ruben Neves' uh, passing. He also mentioned about possible sanctions from the FA or EFL and stuff like that, which I can't see happening, to be honest. But what I am a little bit concerned about is that some fans may get caught up in the excitement of it and start causing some unsavoury scenes. Now, let's just remember that this game's on Sky. The world is watching a lot. It would be a massive audience because of the promotion, because of it being a derby, because of it being prime time on a Sunday lunchtime. So let's make sure that we get promoted with class, as Mr Warnock would say. I'm sure that with all the emotion of it, it should be a very, very great day. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like. Thank you to Dan Richens again for providing some stats and data on um, on Sunday's game and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and I am probably going to do a sort of match day vlog I'm certainly going to try and film some bits in the ground afterwards on Sunday hopefully there'll be scenes of celebration thank you